welcome to another Woo Wednesday. I'm Little Woo and I'm here to address another life question that I've received. And this week's question is, how to discover and heal your prejudices and biases? Uh, that's a great question, thank you so much. I want to start with two tips that you can use to actually find your biases or prejudices and because they can be positive or negative, you can have a positive bias towards a whole group of people or a certain type of person and not realize you're carrying that positive bias. Or you can be carrying a negative bias, uh, which is often called the prejudice uh, towards someone because of something that happened to you before and then you start to see the whole world uh, through that lens and you're kind of filtering out people who might seem like a threat to you. So that's part of the mechanism. When we have a bias or prejudice, we're not fully aware of it. Um, and even if we're aware, we might not be willing to do anything about it. But if you're actually looking to heal and remove some of your own biases because you're really interested in developing yourself as a magical human, then here are some two tips. First is be aware of absolutes in your language and in your views uh, of people um, and issues. People never blah, 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 or people always blah, 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 or that person always then you have a bias that even though at times may be true that action or that behavior of that person to say always or never um, and then to have your reason why your reason will tend to be very polarized and um, not accurate because you're um, seeing absolutes so that's one tip just to notice in your language and in your view do you carry a lot of absolutes oh always never um, so those are just one tip. The second tip is to watch for I would call those people complex. So if you have um, in your language or in your view, you say things like uh, those people, them, there's a lot of them, then there is a bias and prejudice. And sure, there might be all kinds of reasons you have it, but if you're here to really discover those, then be really aware of watching for those people. And those people could be around race, gender, sexual orientation, country, age, culture, religion. So these are all some of the categories that we tend to lump people in and say those people, those Asians, those blacks, those men or those women, um, those Americans, those Mexicans, those gays, those lesbians, those LGBTQ, <laughs> like, uh, those millennials, those hipsters, all uh, those baby boomers, uh, those new agers, those Christians, those Muslims, those Jews. Like, so watch how you speak and how you think about people. Do you think in those, them? It's not that the pronoun them is wrong, but it's that if you really have a, a, a stink to it, as Louis C.K., a, a skank or a stink to it, um, like he jokes about how the word Jew is a, a correct term, but when you say Jew, <laughs> I just it's such a such a great illustration of how we have this stink or skank on certain words, those new agers, you know, or those millennials. Be aware that there's a bias and prejudice that you you might want to look at creating these widespread judgments and sweeping accusations or or blame or shame. Then that's indicating that you, you, there's some healing for you in it too. Where how did you get hurt, and how did you develop? this sense of threat from this type of person. Um, you might have learned it. Maybe they didn't ne never hurt you, but you learned it from your parents, you learned it from your friends, you learned it from your society. Now, why do you want to heal your prejudices and bias? Because if you want to have what I call a love passport, uh, so sure, you have your Canadian passport or your American passport or whatever you have, but to have a real passport in this world that makes you travel without borders, and when I say borders, it's the border of your heart, the walls and armor and weapons that you carry to protect yourself. It makes sense because you've all been hurt and we've all had people that were unkind or um, you know, treated us unfairly and we tend to try to prevent that from happening by having these filters like what type of person do we need to be aware of? So it's our protection mode that creates prejudices and biases. So we're innocent even when we have these prejudices. But understanding your innocence is part of the journey of understanding other people's innocence. And so when you want a love passport, you're opening your heart to more and more people in your life. Because the more people you feel are a threat to you, the less places you can go and the less people that you can love and learn from and help. 
So if you want to make a difference in this world, it's really powerful to look at who you don't like as a group or even as a type of person and how you can heal that so you can get your love passport and travel to any party, to any network, to any group and fall in love with them as a, someone who knows that there is goodness to be found anywhere and that is someone who is willing to find that goodness, to cultivate that goodness and to understand why people are doing bad things it's because they're all in protection mode, they're all seeing threats and so when you understand where their suffering is, you will be able to love more people and open your world. And you will have this love passport that creates a planet without borders for you. When you want your love passport and you want to heal your prejudice, the best thing you can ever do in this lifetime is to pick one bias at a time and start to dive deep into that group or that type of person or that culture and be an explorer, like you're a pioneer, you're going into this world, you don't really know as much as you think you do about this world, and you're going in with an adventurous mind, open, um, with a bit of a scientific mind as well, because you're there to study, and you're there to be a student, because you're there to learn from this culture, and you're there to be a lover, because you're there to fall in love in some way, you're there to find the goodness, and the beauty, and the wisdom, because every type of group, every culture has those things, and then every culture and group has prejudices and darkness because of their own threats and fears. So if you pick one bias at a time and you try to find ways to fall in love with them by studying and understanding, then you will understand the goodness in that group and you will heal your prejudice. And it can happen in this lifetime and it's very real. I can tell you a list of some of my biases and prejudices that I used to have. Uh, cops had a huge hate on for cops. Immediately I felt my armor go up when I saw police walking around and I'd be like, oh, it's like you military, blah, 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 and I blah, 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 blah. And I was really full of hate and full of resistance and full of anger the moment I saw a cop. And I would feel defensive and aggressive. I almost wanted to initiate negative contact with them just to show how what pigs they are, blah, blah, blah. So I, I carried that with me for years. And I saw that in my healing that I can't carry that hatred, not even towards someone who I think I know or think I understand, because I don't. If I carry hate, it's because I don't understand something. It doesn't mean I can agree with all the actions or policies or beliefs. It just means that I'm not understanding the complexity of the situation. And I've come to a very simplistic conclusion about why people are doing something. So I healed my bias towards cops by doing my own healing work and then starting to walk through the world saying, I want to understand, I want to love, I want to. And then I started to track really kind cops and understanding cops and some really amazing people who have devoted their life to truly protect and serve. Not the corruption that I had come to believe that was prevalent in every single cop, because it's not true. And then to understand where does the corruption come from? Why are they driven to do that? I started to understand the old boys network and all the pressures of being in a gang of uniforms. So that understanding has allowed me to do deeper work within myself and to walk through the world and welcome different types of cops um, and, 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 and create a space of positive energy. And and this is, my list goes on and on. Religious folks who used to come to my door or grab me on the street to preach, I used to have a, ah, be really reactive to that, very defensive. I used to have um, an issue around the medical system and doctors and have all these prejudices and beliefs around how wrong they were. And so as I healed each one, I can now be friends and have deeper access to understanding the issues that are at hand find their goodness so that you can bring more change and elevate them as well as yourself. So I hope that you will think about this practice, about how to develop your love passport, how to notice your prejudices, and how to heal your biases by the art of understanding. It is the key to love and compassion and the key to creating change on this planet. So I send you lots of love from the Mermaid Pirate Lagoon. I hope to see you next Wednesday for another broadcast and another question. If you have a question to send me, please email me at treasures at littlewood.org. And you can also work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I do private sessions, uh, Skype 
in person, on the phone. You can check out my website, littlewoo.org, for more information about that. And also, I have all kinds of episodes, all kinds of questions that people have asked me archived on my blog. So if you want to check out some more videos and get some inspiration for your week, I invite you to check out littlewoo.org. Bye-bye.